Okay, so this right here is the Looking Glass Portrait. It's a hologram display. I got it last year. It's really cool. I've put a lot of my Nomad Blender Sculpts on it to show it off. So this is the Deku Sculpt that uh, you can find on my YouTube channel. Really neat. It uh, is a sort of lenticular display and it's a great way to, to show off your 3D works as they're meant to be seen. Really cool device. Right now, they've got a Kickstarter going. Uh, it should be ending here pretty soon for a slightly smaller but more compact display called the Looking Glass Go. I highly recommend you check it out. Uh, it's just uh, just a couple hundred bucks, I think, to, to support it and an absolutely awesome way to show off your 3D art. So be sure and go check it out. Small disclaimer, this video is sponsored by Looking Glass, uh, but again, I'm already a, a big fan and supporter of Looking Glass as it is. In fact, uh, you can go to my Looking Glass Blocks site and you guys are welcome to download some of my, uh, my Looking Glass art that I've done, including Deku here, uh, Popeyes on there. Uh, I think I've got Bugs Bunny and Link on there too. And now I'm going to show you just how easy it is to take a 3D Blender file, 3D Blender render, and pull it over and put it onto the Looking Glass portrait. So to do that, You'll first go to the Looking Glass site and they'll have a Blender plugin. You download, if you never add, put uh, a Blender add-on in, it's pretty straightforward. It's something you should get really com comfortable with, but you basically go to your preferences, add-ons, hit install, you'll pick the zip file that you download. And once you do that, it'll show up here. Uh, let's see, I believe theirs is called Alice. So here's Alice LG, you'll turn it on. Uh, if it's your first time installing it, it'll have a, you know, be sure and install dependencies button. And you click that and it'll install some extra files in the background to make sure it's all going right. Anyways, once you've got that on, it's pretty easy from there. Basically, you just access your Looking Glass uh, add-on here on the side of the viewport. You'll pick the camera that you're using. I've named mine Hero Cam. And uh, you'll see right now that makes everything disappear. Well, uh, basically, there's a camera clip plane. There's a clip start and a clip end. And you can see that here on this polygon on the left viewport. And so my start and end aren't quite set. So the first thing to do is to drag on this clip start and just pull it in, uh, basically until I get to the camera frustrum, which is right about there. So you can see the end of that polygon now matches up with my camera. And then you'll drag the end and make sure that it goes past your uh, your first thing you want rendered, in which case mine is my backdrop, so I want to move it past the backdrop. You can see it shows up in the viewport over here. And then most importantly, once you've got the, I mean, those are pretty important, but once you've got those set, is the focal plane. This is similar to the depth of field focus that I'm using with the empty, but it is represented here with this white polygon. And if I drag on focal plane, you can see that uh, changes where that's set. Basically, the focal plane is kind of where the 3D image pivots when you rotate the image left and right. And so I want that just in front of the nose, uh, you know, maybe a little further just because I want to get that hand in focus. But we'll try that just in front of the nose. Just tweak it and you can see how it's got, I, I don't know if you can see it, it just slightly dims the images where it's focusing. All right, once you've got all that done, you can click on this button up here and it has an uh, option to let it display on the, the light field. And so now, or in the portrait. And so now here you can see my viewport is right here in the portrait. Well, it looks like I've chopped off some of his fingers, so I need to move my camera back. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab my hero cam and I'm going to scoot it backwards. And you'll notice it's not updating in the portrait. That's because I have it to update manually. You can set it to update automatically, but it'll, it's a little bit more taxing on the GPU to do that. And since I'm recording a video and stuff here, I don't really want to mess with uh, possibly just it hanging for a long time. So I move the camera into position and then I just hit this little refresh button. And you'll notice just in a couple seconds here, it refreshes on the looking glass. That looks pretty good. Now, uh, because I moved the camera, the focal plane is actually right up on the uh, the fist there. So that's got it quite a bit in focus. I think I want to push it back just a, just a hair and, and kind of split the difference between the nose and the fist because I, I want kind of both of those uh, 
as kind of equal importance. All right, I do that, I'll hit refresh, and it might be subtle, and it's hard to see, I know, on a, like a YouTube video, but now he is more in focus, the hands are slightly out of focus. I'm gonna pull the focal plane towards the hand just a little bit more. It's a little bit of a dance just to get it right. And then we'll refresh it again. Give it a second. That's looking pretty good on my end. Again, it's very subtle. I'm gonna pull it just a hair more. Refresh. And there, I'm really happy with that. Again, looks pretty cool. I could do this in the material shade of view, but again, it's more taxing on the GPU. And right now I'm running off my laptop as well as OBS. So I don't want to push it any further than I have to. Uh, but, you know, if you've got a powerful GPU and you want to really push the thing to the limit, you can run it in shaded view. You can tell it to automatically refresh. Uh, there's a lot of cool little uh, you know, things you can tweak here in the, in the add-on. All right, from there, it's time to render. I'm going to turn my render samples down. Uh, right now they're at 512, but I think for this I can get away with 128. And all I have to do is just hit render quilt. Uh, it says my I need to set a proper output path in my output node. So this is just on the output node in Blender. Uh, so I'll just set it to my desktop here and we will render it. And you see, it'll get to work rendering uh, the quilt. And basically what's happening here is it moves the camera and it renders all these different views that then get all compiled together into this lenticular, uh, this lenticular file. And uh, I believe it amounts to 48 views. You can see right now it's rendering number three of 48. Uh, and so obviously this will take a little bit of time for this image, I have had some images I'm rendering and they render lickety split. And the reason being is because, because it's rendering so many views and it's, uh, it's matching the resolution of the portrait, it actually renders at a pretty low resolution uh, to some degree compared to the 2048, 2048 by 2048 I'm typically rendering. I'm not sure the exact uh, dimensions and that'll vary if you're on a different looking glass display. But nevertheless, the rendering actually goes fairly quick. Uh, right now I'm on 8 of 48. All that said, I'm probably not going to sit here and, and wait while it renders. So I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead until the video or until the render is finished. So with that, I'll see you in just a few minutes and the render will be ready. All right. And with the magic of editing, uh, the render is just about finished. You can see here rendering 46 of 48 views. Uh, when it's done, we'll be able to load it onto the looking glass and see it in its full cycles rendered glory. It'll look pretty stinking cool. Uh, and we can display it here in Blender, but we can also then load it onto the looking glass using Looking Glass Studio, uh, which is just kind of like a slideshow, slideshow application they have for loading all your quilts. Uh, they call them quilts, the lenticular displays on and you can even then unhook it from the computer and you know put it on a shelf somewhere to display uh, here you can see this is what the quilt looks like 48 views uh, it's you know basically like an 8 by 6 grid of the images and so when you're ready to to show it on the looking glass display we can go over into the plugin here and switch to quilt viewer and we click on over here and this is all the images that are in our blender project and we can set it to quilt render result give it a second to load up and here it is on the quilt looks or on the looking glass this way it looks really stinking cool uh, it's always just really exciting to see all of the images on the looking glass portrait and like i said when you're done uh, if you want, you can load it up using Looking Glass Studio into a slideshow of images, and then you can just power it off from the computer. And I'll give it a second to do that. And you'll see it'll boot up in kind of the, the non-computer monitor mode or whatever you want to call it. So this is what it would look like if it wasn't hooked to a computer and it was booting up. And if you give it a second, and I'll cycle through some of the images I had. So there's Deku once again. I've got bugs. Uh, there's a black cauldron. Here's an animation I did on it. So you can even do animations. This was rendered out of Blender. Uh, Jinx, Link, Popeye, the Big League Chew. As you can see, 
I, pretty much any time I finish the Nomad sculpt, I'm putting it on here because it looks cool. And here's Punchy, uh, made specifically for this purpose. He's got that fist that reach out, reaches out, and unfortunately, on a flat YouTube video, you can't see just how cool the thing looks. But uh, I encourage you guys to, if you can, get your hands on one of these and check them out. They look really cool in person. Uh, you know, it's it's a little bit of a uh, maybe a glamorous way of displaying your stuff. But you know, if you're making 3D art, what better way to display it 3D? So check it out. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this series of videos. Let me know in the comments below. And uh, you know, be sure if you do get your hands on a looking glass to, to look up my looking glass blocks. I'll link to it in the description. And you can download these and check them out for yourselves. And one more thing, the folks at Looking Glass sent me some videos that they took of Punchy and a few of my other pieces on the new Looking Glass Go. This thing is really rad looking. Can't wait to get my own hands on one of these soon. They're currently available for pre-order for $250, and they should be shipping this June. You can check more details at the link below. Until then, if you think you might be interested in the larger looking glass portrait that I featured in this video, be sure and use the affiliate link below for a 10% discount. Let me know what you think.